So how do automatic slack adjusters work anyway? Here we got a wheel that's spinning, brakes are fully released, the wheel should spin. But when we fully apply the brake, the wheel shouldn't spin anymore. We should have contact between the shoe and the drum. Hmm, not in this case. Matter of fact, we can still put a wrench in between the shoe and the drum. That's how much gap we got. The brake has bottomed out, applied all the pressure it can, we still got a gap, we're not going to stop. So with the automatic slack adjuster, it'll set itself up. If we put the wrench on here just to demonstrate, when we release the brake and make a full hard application, if it senses that the brake needs adjustment, it's going to make an adjustment. It's going to turn the wrench or turn the adjusting nut every time we make an application until it senses that it's within the proper adjustment limits and then it's going to stop turning. It shouldn't over tighten itself once it senses that it's got enough pressure, it's not stroking too far, it's going to stop. So here we are, it's not moving anymore, it's at the proper adjustment limit so the auto slack thinks we don't have hardly any gap now between the shoe and the drum with the brakes released. We can spin the drum and when we apply the brakes, we stop. That's how automatic slack adjusters work. So how much difference does it make whether the brake's at two inches, one and three quarters, two and a quarter? It's all there relevant. We got lots of brake to stop the unit. Well, maybe we do at the current time. If this brake is measuring an inch and three quarters, when we measure it with 90 pounds, that means we have three quarters of an inch before it bottoms right out in the brake chamber. Three quarters of an inch is plenty. Maybe not in all cases. Once we start wearing the brakes out, ten thousandths of an inch, the thickness of three sheets of paper,